our Thursday evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins. Tropics are really starting to get interesting. That's for sure. We have Umberto out there that is strengthening 60 mile per hour winds now forecast to go to 120 cat three and forecast to go a little bit further to the west. And boy, oh boy, Invest 94L really got interesting today as the forecast models are getting closer and closer towards the southeast coast. So let's get started right there. You can see we have uh, basically the western Atlantic is where all the action is right now. There's not much even coming off of Africa at this point. The uh, we'll get into Umberto here in just a second. The Invest 94 one has about an 80 to 90 percent chance of development. The 80 percent is in the next two days. OK, the 90 percent is just beyond that. Uh, so really, it's by the time we get towards Saturday, we should have at least tropical storm Imelda. OK, it, well, at least a depression. If it's tropical storm, it will be Imelda. Uh, you can see the two systems sitting out there right now. The top numbers are for Umberto, which is 60 mile per hour winds, pressures down to 1000 and it's moving to the northwest at six miles per hour. It's crawling. All right, it's going very, very slow. So is this one actually. Now that's 94L. Uh, but eventually these things will pick up a little bit of speed. Here's the latest track from the Hurricane Center as of five o'clock this afternoon uh, for Umberto. And you can see really where we're, it's actually doing pretty good. Take I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and show you some of these numbers. 80 mile per hour winds by tomorrow afternoon. That's a hurricane. I mean, it's at 60 now, so that's that's not unheard of, right? But then cat two by Saturday afternoon. Uh, Saturday night into Sunday, it's it's uh, almost cat three. Oh, it is cat three. 111 is cat three, so they're going 115. Sunday afternoon, you've got cat two, uh, oh, cat three, excuse me, at 120, and we'll keep that through Monday, and then it starts to weaken a little bit as you move into Tuesday. By the way, this is Bermuda right here. So what started out as models saying something like this, maybe something like that, is now way out here. So that has really come off to the west there, come off to the left as far as the track goes. Those are the forecast plots right there. You can see that. But again, they all do point at this turn. It's just where is it going to happen? It does have it going a little bit further to the west here, but you know, fairly good agreement with this one. This one is not the one that we're really concerned about, but this one will be a strong storm. And so we're talking lots of surf for the east coast. I mean, the Outer Banks, Carolina is going to be loving it for surf but it's an erosion issue. It's a rip current issue. You do not love that, right? Uh, and that really will start. Uh, you know what? Let me go back here. I texted my buddy <laughs> tonight. What did I say? Swell fades. Is there some swell there now? So on the Carolina coast, that swell starts to come away on Friday afternoon, but Monday it's back. And then the really big stuff gets there Tuesday. But by Tuesday, we've got potentially uh, Imelda making landfall somewhere near South Carolina. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But here we go. Let's talk Imelda now. That's what's called Invest 94L at this time, okay? The next name on the list is Imelda. So this distance is about 850 miles to the center, right there, almost 900 miles apart. And you've probably heard about that Fujiwara effect where the two wrap around each other. To do that, they usually need to be within 900 miles. These are kind of far apart at this point. They're right there on the cusp. Uh, but they are going to be closer together off the southeast coast. Eh, the Canadian still says that it will happen, but most models aren't saying that's going to happen at this point. Uh, let's get in a little bit closer here because this is a really interesting one. It, the, the center is actually now completely away from the, look at all the convection down here. The center they're saying is up here in the Turks and Caicos. All right, I'll go ahead and turn these, uh, the infrared back on so you can see where that is. But if you notice just in the last couple of hours, the convection that was down here is fading and here's the center. OK, we're starting to put a little bit more convection at least closer to the center, not necessarily around it. But looking at this this evening, I think this is starting to get a little bit better organized. All right. And that's what the models are saying. All right. So here we go with the forecast tracks for Invest 94L. And this is what's really changed today. So you can see we've got a couple of options, right? We, we have what uh, coming through the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and then the Bahamas Saturday and the Sunday. This is Sunday time frame. It should be intensifying by that time. It will likely be at least tropical storm Imelda. Remember this area right in here, you've got the warm Gulf Stream waters. They go up something like this, okay? That's very warm water for this thing to work with. Uh, I do expect it to get to at least 
a pretty strong tropical storm, if not a hurricane. Some models are suggesting a hurricane just before landfall. All right, now, some are trying to take this out. As, as Umberto comes by in here, it may, it's trying to say maybe it'll pull it out with it. Most are not saying that, but there's some diversion. I think this still will change. So if you're watching from the Carolinas, uh, it's not set that we have this making landfall at Myrtle Beach, uh, Wilmington, Chalote, uh, or maybe even down to Charleston, even Savannah, right? And if you're watching from Jacksonville, not out of the woods, I don't see a, a much pointing at you at this point, but th the point here is anywhere from Outer Banks to Jacksonville really needs to keep an eye on this thing, okay? Obviously right in the middle is where we're thinking it may end up going. Now let's show you the European model. This is just the main run. This is Sunday at 8 p.m. So if this happens, you've got Umberto, which is way to the south, which doesn't look right to me. And it doesn't look as strong, but then you also have Imelda. Okay, now let's go out to Monday at 10 p.m. And you've got Imelda somewhere here near, near Myrtle Beach. There's Umberto following behind. Let's go out to Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. Umberto's really blowing up. Remember that? That's the forecast. That looks legit there. And then here you go. It's kind of meandering over the South Carolina coast. By Wednesday evening, it's passing Bermuda. Bermuda will get more weather than this from anything they've had so far this year. All right, it's just going to be closer. Everything's gone around them. Uh, and then that's just leftover stuff. I will say there's going to be a ton of shear. So once this makes landfall, if it makes landfall on the southeast coast, it would be Monday-ish, right? I'd just say Monday-ish because it could be in the morning, could be in the night, could change a little bit. But there's quite a bit of wind shear in this area, and it will just increase as we go through that time period. So it will fall apart pretty quickly. Now, that's the European model. Let's look at the GFS. This is Saturday, 10 p.m. There we go. Look, this, this looks similar, right? Here's Umberto. There's what would be Imelda. Let's go to Monday at 9 p.m. Very similar look to what the European had. There we are on Tuesday, 9 p.m. It's a little bit weaker here, but it takes it on out. Very similar solutions, which is not terrible. I, I do at least like to see the models agree just a little bit more. Let's take a look at the wind shear forecast. And I'll tell you what, this is what is saving us. Look at this dip that you see right here. You see that dip and then coming right back up? That is a big trough. There's an upper level low sitting here. That is helping to take whatever's here. Instead of coming right at us, It'll take whatever's here and, and pick it up. That was the original thought that it picks it up and takes it out, but it may miss it. It may pick it up and then let it turn back in. Okay, so let's go and let's look at the shear forecast for Monday. And so I know this is tough to see, but right in here, there's the center, okay, of what would be Imelda. Here we go. We've got Cat 3 Umberto out there Monday. All right, now there's a shear, a ton of shear across the southeast but not much across the center or maybe just getting to the center. And then there's potential landfall Monday night into Tuesday. And look where all the shear is. It's out to the southwest side. It's not over the middle, but there will be some. And then after that, then there is a ton, ton of shear that starts coming in over top of it. It would be somewhere in here and it gets sheared apart. So it will weaken pretty quickly here. Man, that's a lot of lines right there. Whew. But you get the idea. To me, this is the key especially for Tampa Bay, right? And, and, and for that matter, most of Florida <clears throat> is this dip that you see right here in that upper level low. That's what we needed. Okay, guys, <clears throat> that's where we stand right now. Let me show you one more graphic before I let you go. I want to show you this wind graphic, kind of give you an idea of just where the model's thinking now. And I hesitate a little bit just because this is going to change. But if it does develop in the Bahamas, look where the wind is. It's to the north and the east, at least as it's moving past Florida. Then as it gets towards Georgia and South Carolina, North Carolina, it starts to wrap around on the northwest side just a little bit more, and then it moves onshore. All right. That's it for now. We'll be right back.